today we are going to discuss about the effects of soil pollution today's lecture will be the last lecture of this uh, soil pollution uh, uh, in which we will be discussing about effects of soil pollution and in brief we will discuss about how can we control the soil pollution so the first impact is the industrial waste that contains a lot of chemicals and toxic substances like uh, from any kind of industries, whether it is a dyeing industry, electroplating industry, it contains various chemicals like heavy metals, chromium, mercury, <clears throat> lead, and that uh, can find its way to the soil from the wastewaters or it can be deposited from the atmosphere by what we call the dry deposition. Dry deposition basically happens when the atmospheric impurities they settle down on the ground on the surface of the soil and then it adds pollution pollutants to the soil so when the chemicals uh, get or toxic substances get added to the soil they find their way into the uh, water bodies no uh, in the soil and then it uh, definitely it finds its uh, way into the groundwater and other water bodies and also into the plants and later on it gets accumulated that is called biomagnification or uh, it gets accumulated into the fatty tissues of the animals and it can pose various kinds of risks particularly this is a uh, case when uh, there are certain pesticides like ddt which i have discussed earlier in water pollution how it gets accumulated through the food chain so industrial wastes they can uh, be a source of such kind of pollutants Second one is the domestic wastes that uh, basically is the garbage that we uh, throw out from our homes. You can see it is a common problem. Uh, garbage, it can uh, consists of biodegradable wastes and non-biodegradable wastes. Biodegradable wastes are like the food uh, wastes, uh, like the vegetable peelings, which can be easily degraded or that can be eaten by the animals, stray animals. But uh, when these uh, kind of uh, garbage or rubbish that get accumulated on certain site, it uh, hosts many kinds of the diseases. Like first, it is it uh, generates the fuel uh, odor. It is very unbearable to uh, smell that kind of. Uh, uh, environment in that kind of environment second one it is uh, the breeding place of various kinds of uh, scavengers or dogs like animals so it is very unsafe to walk over those kind of places and most importantly uh, these uh, sites they serve as a pest uh, they uh, like the fly house fly and a certain kind of the vectors they that spread the diseases in humans and animals so these domestic wastes they act as a breeding place for certain pests <clears throat> and third one is the pesticides that we apply in the ground or in the field for example in our apple orchard or in our the paddy fields we apply certain kind of pesticides so that the weeds can be controlled uh, in paddy fields so that in apples, pests like scab, sandu scale, red mite and that kind of common diseases that can be controlled by the pesticides. But only a small proportion of such fertilizers and such pesticides finds uh, their way to the target. The rest of the percentage of the pesticides and fertilizers, they find their way to the soil. And upon entering into the soil, they uh, react with various uh, physical and biological properties of soil. Besides, more important, they interact with the biological uh, properties of the soil like the microorganisms. So when we add pesticides, they also attack the microorganisms in the soil and they kill the beneficial organisms. Beneficial microorganisms like there are certain organisms in the soil like earthworms. Earthworm is called the friend of the farmer because inside the soil it start making the holes, it start aerating the soil. 
when earthworm is inside the soil it eats the soil and um, produce the worm casting and that is very uh, nutritious and the same technology is employed uh, for the generation of vermicompost in which earthworms are released on the organic matter that might be leaves or food particles or any kind of organic waste cow dung so they uh, eat that uh, organic waste and they digest it and they release the available nutrients that can be uh, used as a compost that is called worm compost so such kind of organisms like earthworms or beneficial microorganisms bacteria fungi so the fungi is uh, beneficial uh, if you have heard the mycorrhiza uh, that is the fungi inside the roots they have a symbiotic association with the big trees so the fungi gets the food from the roots of the plants and in exchange the fungi gives uh, it enhances the absorption of various kinds of nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus to the plants so this is a kind of symbiotic association and another kind of same association you might be hearing or you might be learning from your childhood that is the symbiotic association from uh, in the legumes plants like the uh, rajma plant roots uh, with the rhizobium in which the bacteria they uh, fix the atmospheric nitrogen and uh, it gets uh, transported to the roots of the plants and uh, in exchange the pulses legume plants they supply the nutrients so such kind of beneficial organisms they gets impacted by such kind of pesticides and this is called ecological backlash in which beneficial organisms are are uh, affected or they are killed by such kind of pesticides so uh, this is called ecological backlash. Besides that, uh, when we go for intensive agriculture, intensive agriculture means when we are uh, aimed to produce high uh, amount of uh, food grains for the increasing population, we are using certain kind of inputs. One of the input I discussed is the pesticides that uh, only enhances the production by uh, controlling the pest, pest, pest uh, diseases but besides that giving the extra nutrients we use fertilizers to the crops <clears throat> and when we uh, apply the fertilizers to the crops same principle also applies here only certain kind of uh, certain amount of the fertilizer that gets absorbed by the plant roots because when uh, we apply fertilizers all nutrients or fertilizers are not inaccessible to the uh, plant roots so most of the fertilizers either they get washed away or uh, by the runoff water or they are uh, they are percolated into the groundwater so over the long term uh, over the long, long run they also uh, reduce the capacity of the soil to improve the fertility so uh, basically uh, the in soil there are various kinds of microorganisms they uh, continuously are degrading the soil organic matter so that they can release the various nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus and other micronutrients also there are n number of uh, like 15 20 micronutrients that are required for the plant growth so they are supposed to be available in the soil because only when the microorganisms degrade the organic matter. So when we are using the chemical fertilizers, these chemical fertilizers interact in their process of degradation of the micro, this uh, organic matter. So the microorganisms capacity and it overall or the long run reduces the fertility of the soil. So it uh, makes us more dependable on the on the chemical fertilizers but recently there have been uh, various innovations uh, like using of uh, bio fertilizers one of uh, which uh, i have discussed earlier that is vermicompost that is also a bio fertilizer so they are very uh, ecologically friendly fertilizers they didn't uh, i mean they didn't uh, interrupt with the natural process of degradation of organic matter in the soil and next one, how uh, the soil pollution, uh, various, um, I mean, the effects of soil pollution is a mine dust that destroys the vegetation of an area and makes the land barren. Mine dust, basically, when we do mining, uh, it might be any kind of mining, like coal mining or copper mining or iron mining, any type of mining. So the, because of the mining, we are 
uh, disturbing the land surface and that uh, soil gets converted into the dust and it travels to the adjacent area and it settles down on the leaves of the plants so it reduces the photosynthetic ability of the uh, leaves so you might have been uh, seeing that uh, adjacent to the roads if the road is dusty or it is not well maintained so set the road on the roadside some plants they uh, on their leaves dust is settled there is a layer of dust so same kind of here but in mine uh, dust kind of thing there are certain chemicals uh, like sulfur dioxide or sulfur compounds are there they can uh, interact with the soil uh, with the vegetation and make it uh, una uh, unable to do photosynthesis besides it can settle down on also on the land and it can make the uh, soil infertile and uh, uh, infertile and it can uh, lead the soil barren. And another one is the radiations actively affect the soil and its fertility. That is the radioactive waste. But these are kind of specific at specific locations where, uh, like the chemical laboratories, which are using radioactive chemicals, they are, are depositing or they are dumping the electronic waste or this uh, radioactive waste, and it finds its way to the food chain and it causes various kinds of diseases like it can cause mutations small kind of mutations can cause cancerous growth in the tissues so this is also an effect of radioactive waste besides human excreta like pathogens enteric bacteria parasitic worms they can also transmit through vegetables so if we are uh, irrigating our fields uh, by the wastewater or sewage water so sewage water also contains various kinds of these bacteria or worms they can find their way into the human body through the vegetables which are grown on such kind of water so there are various kinds of uh, studies done on this and one of uh, the uh, also one of the organisms the nematodes they are small microscopic organisms uh, that can be seen in the microscope they are snake like so they also find their way into the food chain and they can enter into the human intestines and these worms kind of thing they can parasitic worms and they can affect the human health so there are some statistics how the soil pollution uh, effect uh, dif different dimensions of uh, the <clears throat> ecosystem so in the first decade of 21st century soil degradation released about 3.6 to 4.4 billion tons of carbon dioxide and this is particularly related to the climate change so there are various impacts of climate change one of the impact is the soil degradation and soil degradation is only because of the soil pollution so because of that there is the chances that uh, there are some reports in the range of 3.6 to 4.4 billion tons of carbon dioxide might be released into the atmosphere Besides soil degradation, climate change might uh, in 2000 up to 2020 that can uh, make the migration of uh, the people uh, around 550 to 700 million people may migrate from one area to another area because all the impacts which I have discussed earlier the can reduce the soil fertility, it can uh, impact the human health and definitely it can make the soil barren and it reduces the food availability that is there is a food security issue also related with the soil pollution and uh, next one is the soil contamination is one of the major causes that triggered the sixth mass extinction in the history the population of land vertebrates fell by 38 percent between 1970 to 2012. it is kind of statistics in which they are saying that uh, about uh, vertebrates population have been uh, seen declining up to 38 percent in between 1970 and 2012. so you need not uh, to remember these statistics but it's just an addition to the knowledge the number of inhabitants in most arid areas arid areas means where there is a very less uh, rainfall like the rajasthan the east, uh, western part of the rajasthan of the earth could uh, account 45 percent of the world population means uh, 
the arid areas will increase and the population arid area will increase because of the soil degradation while the wetlands areas have decreased it states that in last three centuries wetland area have decreased uh, by 87 percent because of the land degradation so you can see most of our wetlands like Wooler Lake, Dull Lake, the area is shrinking continuously over the last few decades. So this is also how the human population is increasing and they are degrading the soil. And uh, also this is the case where the soil degradation can result into the degrading of the water bodies. And this all can impact on the world domestic gross domestic production in which global economic losses uh, that are caused by the soil degradation are expected to exceed by 10 percent so this uh, gdp of the uh, some nations can be uh, impacted by the soil pollution also soil pollutions uh, might enter in our body that i have discussed and could cause various uh, diseases besides some antibiotics that are released from various kinds of wastes into the environment, they increase the resistance of the various uh, these uh, microorganisms. So, if we are applying more pesticides, they are uh, less uh, effective because the resistance of such kind of pathogens, uh, I mean the bacteria, they have increased because the antibiotic pollution that is common nowadays. Uh, because of certain uh, sources like the hospital based or some we are using many kind of things which contain antibiotics so overall such kind of things they increase the resistance of pests and disease and overall they can in increase the incidence of pests and disease instance means the occurrence of such diseases and overall the soil degradation can impact air water and uh, air water quality particularly in the developing countries where there is the very high uh, trust on the natural water resources and uh, this can uh, lead to the impact on air and water quality besides the soil degradation. And in short, we can summarize these points in few points like natural nutrients it is uh, in, uh, because of the soil degradation and soil pollution soil and natural nutrients are lost in the soil it can lead to soil barren these all points i have discussed and it can disturb the balance between flora and fauna flora means plants fauna means animals residing in the soil basically the soil biodiversity is impacted it might be the microorganisms bigger uh, animals or it can be the plants and it can also lead to the death of animals and plants in animals humans are also included and overall it can uh, lead to the terrible impact on the health it might be because of the the chemicals it might be because of the physical <clears throat> change in the soil it might be the biological change in the soil all they are related to the soil uh, pollution or soil degradation so in last slide, I want to discuss about how can we control such kind of uh, soil pollutants. So the first is the proper legislation. So in India, we also have the legislation about the use of pesticides. That is, uh, that is regulated by the Insecticides Act uh, 1968, and. Uh, that was, uh, I mean, uh, Insecticides Act rules was uh, issued in 1971. So if we properly implement such kind of acts, so definitely we are going to reduce the use of pesticides and fertilizers, particularly in our agriculture sector. So over the period of 30 years, as I have told you yesterday also in last lecture, that there are around 23 pesticides which have been banned or phased out from the Indian, uh, I mean, the India, in India for the use. So there are still uh, many uh, pesticides that are, are in screening that might be banned in near future. One of the uh, chemical was DDT, endosulfan, and many uh, kind of chemicals that have uh, witnessed that have uh, lead to various kind of uh, physical uh, and um, anatomical uh, impacts on the humans. So one part is the legislation. What is the law? How can we implement? If we, uh, uh, if we abide all laws, then definitely we are going to reduce the soil pollution. 
improve in agriculture methods like reduce the use of chemical fertilizers and improve the use of the bio fertilizers biological pest control you know in environment nature have provided the control of every species by another species like we have seen uh, the food chain in which the carnivores they control the population of herbivores same in nature there are some pests whose population can be controlled by some other organisms we need to uh, like uh, do research on that or if it is already uh, I mean available in literature how can we control so we need to implement that so the use of the biological pest control or um, biological fertilizers they can also uh, drastically reduce the soil pollution public should be made aware of harmful effects of soil pollution so this is very important uh, as I have uh, seen in New Delhi, uh, in early morning, there is an announcement by municipal corporation that if anybody is uh, uh, seen that he is throwing trash on the uh, road or he or she is uh, seen that the burning the trash uh, outside in open environment, they can face three months jail or 5,000 or 10,000 uh, rupees fine. So when we are making aware our public with such kind of things, how the soil pollution is harmful to our health. And by such kind of announcements, we definitely can control the soil pollution. This is very important in case of solid waste. The waste which is generated by every individual in the country or every individual in the or JNK. So you are drinking the soft drinks like the pet bottles, chips, pat packets. So you should properly dispose of uh, those things in the designated place like dust bins or the areas which have been designated for the dumping of those kind of things. We should not trash such kind of things in open ground or, or on the road. That definitely leads to the, it's kind of contagious thing. If you uh, throw trash any at any place, so the people start saying that this is a trash bin and they can start uh, throwing th trash at that place and over the period of time there there is a big pile of the garbage of trash another one is the it is particularly important for the um, transportation and the storage of some chemicals or oil that is transfer stations are meant for temporary storage of bulk transport of garbage built to be a suitable place like uh, this is also a particular case uh, where the garbage is directly stored or collected on the roads where from there it is loaded to the trucks and meant for transportation to the dumping area. So the some kind of uh, bins or some kind of uh, the storage facility should be made available so that they are properly uh, managed at that place. And also this is meant for the oil and chemical when we are storing oil and chemicals that also the facility should be made uh, I mean it should be uh, well planned uh, so that it cannot be damaged by the external forces cow dung human excreta and agriculture wastes uh, should be used for the energy generation you know the biogas is uh, very easy to generate you can generate at home also from kitchen waste if you don't have the cow dung Available, you can made it, uh, made it from the farm residues also. So, <clears throat> by this method, you can reduce the volume of the uh, waste generated from the farm or the from the kitchen, and you can generate the electricity and uh, also you can generate the uh, fertilizers, the biogas slurry, which we call. You can directly apply it in the fields. It can enrich the fields with the nutrients, and also you can get the electricity and gas. You can light up the lamps, uh, you can uh, use the biogas in the gas stove for cooking purpose, for lighting purpose. There are n number of examples. In uh, European countries, biogas is also used for the transportation purpose after some treatment because biogas have high concentration, about 30% of carbon dioxide. Use of plastic and polythene should be minimized. It has been already banned in uh, JNK, but still there is a use of plastic. Whenever you are going to any any shop, you are you are asking for the polythene. So if you start uh, reducing the use of polythene in each ho every household, they are using the plastics uh, like the 
polythene bags for uh, buying the grocery or uh, <clears throat> carrying the fruits. And then we are directly throwing it to the open environment. So minimizing the use, we can reduce the soil pollution. Waste uh, products like the ash, basically, which is generated from the thermal power plants or brick lanes where the coal is used for the uh, energy purpose. Those kind of ash that can be used for the uh, production, the bricks or lightweight cement that also can reduce the release of ash into the environment. And in case of agriculture, crop rotation should be encouraged to revive depleted nutrient. The places where the nutrient availability has decreased because of the soil pollution, crop rotation is an important where in one season we uh, uh, we uh, grow one crop in the field and next season we grow another crop. So there is a nutrition, uh, I mean, the uh, there is not a stress on only one nutrient in the soil. So we use, uh, for example, pulses in one uh, rotation, then uh, maize or mixed kind of cropping. So this kind of uh, things, they can reduce the soil degradation and soil pollution. And importantly, there are certain grasses which can absorb the harmful nutrients like cadmium, chromium, like cadmium uh, is uh, absorbed by the Brassica gensia. Brassica gensia means the uh, this uh, rapeseed, uh, uh, which we call in Kashmiri tilgogul, that is very high absorb. Uh, the uh, it absorbs cadmium from the polluted soil. So likewise, there are n number of grasses like typha is used uh, in the water bodies or wetlands that can also absorb certain kind of chemicals. So such kind of grasses they can be used for uh, reviving the lands or wetlands that have been polluted by the various kinds of pollutants and after then biomass can be the plants in which the chemical uh, compounds have been absorbed in the biomass of the plants then it can be harvested and disposed of safely where it cannot find its way back to the environment and uh, at last the proper sanitation facility should be provided proper sanitation like the the facilities we are using uh, like toilets public toilets might be or that we are using at home uh, if we are using the what is septic tanks it should be made leak proof so that the pathogens or the waste human waste it cannot find its way into the groundwater and it contaminates whole uh, uh, so water also it, it uh, reduces the soil pollution because overall those all waste goes into the soil so it should be properly sealed so that uh, after the certain period of time it can be opened and the wastes which have been accumulating there over the period of time can be used for as a uh, can be used as a fertilizer. Mm -hmm.